Gentlemen, it's been said that not everybody runs well with a full cup of success. So this next topic is gloating and sportsmanship. How do we tackle that subject? So we'll just open it up. Glenn, you've got the most recent engagement out there. I'm sure there's a lot that these millennials and these Zs that are coming in on the back end want to celebrate about. How do you deal with that? Well, uh, you know, I, I think it, it goes back to a team concept first. Mm -hmm. If you, can, if you can sell them on a team concept, that will help because what they're seeing on Saturday and Sunday is the new dance or what, you know, stand over somebody for making a tackle or whatever. So I think that's, you know, that, that's a big part of it there. And then another huge concept uh, that, that's happened now are, are, is that with the college commitments, early commitments, um, you know, a, a young man that had potential is all of a sudden turned into a star and he hadn't done anything yet. Uh, and he may go from one day being just a humble kid that goes to school to the next day he, he sees himself as a five-star athlete and he's done nothing except he has measurables that could get him there. Um, I think that's a, a big challenge today and I think we're at fault as a, as a society to, to making somebody too big too soon. Mm -hmm. What about expressing yourself, though? I mean, how do you find that balance between, Coach, how did you find that balance with your players between expressing yourself or just acknowledging that I did a good job? Is there a balance there that must be struck? I'm a Barry Sanders man. Uh -huh. I, like, I like handing that ball to the official at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not like this. I don't like, you know, my mama used to say, son, you smelling yourself. Uh, <laughs> I think we have too many smelling them too ripe, huh? Yeah, uh, I, 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 that balance is not good with me. All right, um, coach, that's an opinion, right? Now these millennials, you try to tell them not to do it, and they tell you just like you've articulated to us. Man, I can't do that. What do you mean I can't celebrate? Come on, man, what's up? You're hurting the team, and the bottom line is he doesn't want to be over here by coach. He wants to be on the field playing. So you still hold that over him. And, and it's tough love, but at the same time, it's the correct thing to do. It is about team. There's not the letter I in the word team. It's about we. It's not about me. And that's what you got to sell. And especially because uh, I, I, my latter years in coaching, I was with the running backs. And uh, Miss Nancy, my wife, on Thursdays, she'd bring some cookies over to the, to the running backs. Every Thursday, she did it for duration my entire time in coaching high school and college but we always made a pan for the big guys the big I didn't call them the big uglies I call them the big pretties we always would and then we did I'd, I'd say hey you two let's go down go see the offensive lineman today you had to appreciate those guys for what they did because without them you can't go anywhere I sold my guys I preached that I, it was the gospel and if a young man says, well, hey, coach, hey, 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 I didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. This is the way it's going to be. And uh, uh, when I coach guys, I coach them hard. I had a coach one time, one time I was interviewing for a guy, for a coach, and uh, I told him, I said, I will not cu curse my guys. I asked the good Lord a long time ago to take that off my tongue because it cuts like a two-edged sword. But they knew when I was upset with them. And when I put my foot down, we're not going to do that. You're going to hand it to the official. I sold them on that. Mm -hmm. It had to come from me. It didn't have to come from anywhere else. It had Because I was in that room with them every day. I know they talk about the strength coach being with them all the time. But every day at a certain time, they're going to be mine for that length of time. And so I worked hard at that because it wasn't about them. It was about the team. You know, I always used to tell our, our kids that, uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna celebrate, celebrate as a team. And if we and and we did this at Judson when I was coaching there, if 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 we scored, 
the running back wasn't doing the only one doing it, the celebration by himself. He was out, those those offensive linemen had a hustle to that end zone, and we celebrated together. And we didn't just do that in games; we did it in practice. It was it was a part of us. We were going to celebrate as a team. And the same thing on defense. If there was a there was a big play or something, we were going to celebrate as a team. We weren't going to. Uh, defensive lineman make a sack, and he's going to walk away from everybody and and do his dance. We were going to we were going to celebrate with him because we was a part of a team, and they didn't do that by themselves. And I, and I think that's something that you can teach the kids. Uh, but like Glenn was saying a while ago, that a, a lot of it comes back to what they see in Sunday, on Sundays, and 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 uh, that's you know they that's where they they learn those things, and it makes it a lot tougher. On the on the high school coaches, but if you do not try to address it and give them, and I think you're right, you got to give them a way to celebrate. But if you don't try to address it, it will it will go crazy. Yeah. So how how do you counter that? I mean, again, the league, everyone in the league is doing it, and so how do you counteract that? Is it maybe a message like? Those guys are grown men and they're being paid to do that. What is it? Tactically, how do you make the argument that you don't do that? Well, you know, I think, I think you have to decide what's important to you as the head coach. And, and, and you, not everybody does things the same way. And you're right. The, the, the rules state in the NFL you can celebrate. The rules state where we play you can't. So it makes that a little bit easier because uh, you play within the rules. Uh, you know, uh, something that was thinking about when you were talking about sportsmanship, and this is kind of off, but it's not. Um, when you just watch the, the, the last presidential election and you watch, that was the most unsportsmanship I've ever seen between different people. And that's what, that's what our society lives on now, is inflicting uh, pain to the other side and, and degrading them and, and whatever. And I think we're doing, we're one of the few areas we go, we're swimming upstream. We're one of the few areas that are just, you get two coaches and you listen to them, you listen to the two guys this week that are going in the NFL, there's nothing but, but admiration for the other and we'll be fortunate if we can win. I don't know if we can, They're, you know, and when it's over, the losing team is going to congratulate the winning team. They're going to say they deserved it. They played better than we did. We made too many mistakes. I, as a head coach, should have done this. Where else do you see that in this world? You don't see it. Um, and, and, and I want to hold on to that as long as we can. Yeah, it's true. Any contrition kind of comes with a caveat. But this no, not in the National Football League, they're going to say, look, with the better team won. And you, you hear those kind of definitive messages and no excuses. And that's very powerful in and that of itself. Very that's very powerful. So on Monday when they had media day, that the first time the NFL ever did this, was brought two head coaches and part of their team yeah, I together. Was, I was there. I saw it. It was good. I, I thought it was one of the best things they've ever done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we do that, at, uh, you know, at bowl games. We have a, a meal and both teams are there and that kind of thing. And usually there's somebody up, they do a skit or whatever. We hang together. First time they've ever done that in the NFL. I thought that was a great step towards sportsmanship. But just like Glenn and Coach here, uh, you can't go – and celebrate in the end zone because that's a 15-yard penalty. If you're going to celebrate, celebrate with your linemen, but bring it to the sideline. Now, the one thing that we're getting by with, I'm talking about on the collegiate level, is get, getting a high bump, you know, whether it's with the hands or with the chest. And, but most of that is taking, it's, taking, it's taking place in the end zone, but it's taking place all, also on the sideline. But you've got to just sell them that, hey, you're hurting the team. So how have you guys learned from other coaches on how to handle this whole notion of uh, respect for your opponent? Who are some examples uh, who influence you in this regard for how to extend that to your players with respect to respecting the opponent? Did you learn any nuggets from anyone else? Or was it pretty much your own stuff that you used? Yeah, you learned? I, my high school coach was the late Rex Dockery. And I know Glenn and Coach here is a legend in himself too. Glenn played for a great coach, uh, but he always wanted you to shake their hand, win, lose, or draw. Uh, 
he wanted you to respect uh, the, the next man because that made you stronger. He would preach that to us all the time. He says, successful teams are a family of one, and he wanted us to go as a one heartbeat, but at the same time, at the end of the day, he wanted us to be gentlemen. Want to be tough, want to go, get after it, but he wanted us to be gentlemen. And back in the day, we actually traveled in blazer coats. And uh, uh, I thought that was cool, because I, I didn't have a coat back in the day. Uh, and uh, he wanted you to look sharp. He said, if you look sharp, you play sharp. But he wanted you to respect the opponent. What, what about sometimes when the coaches themselves don't show the decorum that you would want to be consistent with good sportsmanship? Does that make it tough to coach? I would say, uh, you know, outwardly, no. Uh, you you try to act the same. Uh, a coach acts that way or whatever. You you make sure you show your team by example how you're going to handle this situation. We talk about bad cop, good cop. Uh, you know, that's the law. And if that's the law, we're going to respect the law and we're going to go by it. It may not be what you agree with, but you have to deal with it because your reaction could cause you to get farther in trouble. Uh, of being able to handle it, but but inside, yeah. It, when you when you watch uh, a guy on the other side act that way, it it bothers you inside. It, to me, I don't think that you know, I don't think that's what sport sport is about. And and when you when you go back and you you think about sport and you think about uh, you know practicing etiquette and 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 making sure you've got respect for for your opponent and, and those things. To me, that's what, you, what we should be teaching all the way through. And th those are the things, when you teach those to the coach, when, when they, if they think that they can be on the field and, and show disrespect and, and, and uh, be condescending and, and those types of things, then, then they think they can do it in life. You know, they think that's, a, that's the way you're supposed to do it in life. Uh, and, uh, that's, and, and if you go the other direction, if you're forcing those things, they're going to they're think the same things. And I, I should be showing respect in life. I should, be, I, should be, I should have an etiquette about me in life. And to me, that's what, that's what sport is about. But we're moving, obviously, as a as as a as a culture, we're moving away from that, and I think that's I think that's not a good thing. I think it's a bad thing. Mm. How about uh, instilling competitive play? This is kind of a tangent uh, question, but it is related. Um, how do you instill competitive play, and still maintain that balance? I think it was Jefferson who said, "In matters of style, go with the current. In matters of principle, stand firm like a rock." How do you find that balance? Letting them celebrate, juxtapose, structure and order. I think you have to be able to relate to the kids that you're coaching. Um, and there's a way that we as coaches are some of the, the best manipulators there are. So let's take things that they like and they want and let's manipulate that into what uh, a lesson and, and, and the way we want it done. You know, uh, back when I was a kid, uh, you know, it was a, a, a style of hair. It was very, very important. And uh, there were a lot of families that had a big problem over, uh, you know, hair, hair length and too long. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it's very important that you understand the people you're working with. You show them that you love them. And because I love you, I think this is the best thing for you. And, and you can get a lot done. That's good. That's good. Coach, what was your strategy for relating to people to to get your concepts across and what you felt would work and then giving them some latitude to be themselves and express themselves. Well, we had a rule, you know, you, you, you know, of course earrings was a big thing, jewelry is a big thing, you know, and, and this hairstyle is a big thing. And, and you gotta have a, a balance there. You gotta come, you know, like Glenn says, when we were kids, you know, you couldn't even wear a mustache, you know, you had to keep your hair cut and all those kinds of things. I'm a little older than you, Glenn. But, uh, uh, there's there's a balance, uh, you know. We had a rule that uh, if you're representing the school, no jewelry. If you're on TV, if you're on the field playing, uh, that's how we handled it. But now, if you're in class and you out with your girl and you wear your earrings, but when you're representing the team and representing the school, and and you know, 
and you know, and then they would see other teams have their earrings in while they're playing and all those kinds of things. They look on TV on Sunday and see them with earrings in, and it was a tough thing. But at the bottom, the end of the day, they wanted what you wanted. They wanted what the coach wanted. They wanted to be successful at the end of the game. Do you guys think you did a good enough job reinforcing the payoff? This is why we do. Again, good teams know how to do things, but the great ones know why. That's yeah. why. Why? This is why we don't do. This is why. Yeah. Do, do we praise yeah. that enough? Oh, yeah. It's no doubt. Uh, go back to my high school coach. We, I may have said this uh, to a coach one time. Every Friday, we'd come to the stadium early. early you give us shoe polish and white strings, and we clean our cleats, and everybody shine their shoes. I wonder why in the world we got to do that. We're just going to go out and dirty them up. Dirty them up, but it was all about that balance. Yeah. It's all about that respect, and it's all about hey, looking sharp, playing sharp. You know. Yeah, I think it's. I think it comes down to uh, setting a standard. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a part of this team, these are our standards. And you've got to raise your standard to be a part of this team. And uh, our standards are: if we celebrate, we're going to celebrate as a team. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to have facial hair, and we're not going to have earrings. But that's that's the standard of being a part of this team. And and uh, to me, you know, it's it's a uh, you, you go back to it's not a it's not a right; it's a privilege. Yeah. And and yeah. and to meet and to 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 earn that privilege, you've got to meet a certain standard. I just think we have to find that balance in being able to communicate the why part more and more. And I know that they will adhere to it. Uh, some years ago, the Army changed their motto. And I was working with them on, on one of the projects that was related to it. And it was from be all you can be to an army of one. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they did it, they were playing to the narcissistic leanings of the millennial cohort. Mm -hmm. An army of one, it's about me. But what they quickly discovered, to your point, D.W., when you get in the Army, you're going to do it the Army's way. <laughs> there ain't no doubt about it. So we'll tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, this is all yeah. about you. It's an Army of one. So come on in, sign up. <laughs> when you get in, it's about the yeah, Army yeah, way. That's right. And then the thing is, the Army way is really better for you. You just don't know it. But again, I think we can do a better job of communicating that why, because they're asking. They don't trust, they don't you know, take for granted so much as previous generation. Glenn, you and I were talking off camera about this. Uh, close us out with thoughts on that whole notion of back in the day, they never questioned, but today, because of lack of trust, they ask why. Well, when you look back at, at who coached us, uh, they were coming off of a world war uh, and, 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 and teamwork was ingrained in almost everybody in society. I mean, people back home were, were doing what they had to do. To, if they couldn't go to war, they were here manufacturing stuff, so everything was gauged for the team. The team was the United States, but we were fighting a war. We knew who our opponent was, and we were going after it. And so it was that concept. That, they came back, a lot of football coaches were enlisted into the Army. They came back, and football, college football changed right after World War II. Uh, and, and, you know, you've known that through looking through the years. Uh, and so that's the way that it was for a long time. We were coached by those guys or, or people that came from those guys. Um, and so with that style, we're, we're coaching a different kid now. And we see it as disrespect. You know, we've always said this. Um, if my coach, my high school coach, Gordon Wood, said run through that wall, I ran through the wall. Didn't ask why I did it because that's what he said. Well, if, if, our, if our feeling of respect is, I told you to do it, you do it, uh, and a lot of us have that, respect, have, have that thought, then it's disrespectful for someone to ask why. Uh, the world we live in today, you said it earlier, the kid wants to know why. Uh, and, and, and we have, it's funny because we have, we've set that up by the way we've done things, and now we're mad at them for doing exactly what we set up. Uh, so how are we going to, to deal with this? We have to take the time to explain why. Once we do that, then I think these kids are no different than any other kids. They'll jump on board and they'll do whatever you ask if they see a reason. Yeah. And a lot of coaches don't. Yeah. A lot of coaches right. don't take the time to say this is why. Uh, they don't take the time to sit down and, and, and say this is, this is why we do it this way. And, and, uh, this is this is important to 
to our team, and this is why it's important. And yes. They yeah. just don't take the time to do that. And as a result of not doing it, they end up with reluctant compliance as, as opposed to willful participation. So it's yeah, not exactly. 100%. Yeah, it's that's not right. 100 percent. I'm don't doing ever. it. I'm, sm I'm smiling on the outside, but I don't want to do it on the inside. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. You know, I heard a guy talk last weekend about uh, on the special teams, and he was saying, uh, is he an in-the-boat guy or is he not in the boat? You know, a guy that's in the boat, he's going to do whatever he has to do because he's in the boat. So mm -hmm. the key is, is how do we get him in the boat? Right, right. That's the key. See that now? Listen, you just hit it, Coach. You nailed it. I'm going to. This is kind of off record, but it's your job as editors to find out how to weave this in there. Now you're hitting on this all important engagement and how do you get people engaged in what you're doing? We know, for example, working with Gallup, that of America's 100 million full-time formal employees, that 53 percent of them are disengaged. It doesn't mean what they're doing is injurious to the business enterprise, they're just doing their job, showing up doing their job. Another 19% are actively disengaged. They're basically encouraging the disengaged, why are you coming in early? Why are you going to lift weights early? Because what, man, he just talked to you like that yesterday, why are you going in early? They are actually encouraging the ones who are already marginal to do even less. And it's that 28% that are the producers. Those are the ones that you can rely on, but we have to double that. And I believe, I don't know what the numbers are, but we're gonna have to do a better job at increasing those people who represent the core of what we do. And the strategy for that has got to be telling them why. Exactly. That's you right. got to tell them why. And, and, and I agree with that 100%. But as you go through changing culture, because that's what we're talking about, changing yeah. culture, mm -hmm. yeah. when you get to that point where they're doing it on their own, mm -hmm. and we see it all the time in off season. Yeah. You remember how tough off season was. At some point in time, I can remember, and we didn't have a big elaborate weight room when I was back there in Morristown, Tennessee. It was just a little old universal gym, a homemade mates, and a pegboard, and this, that, and the other. Did a lot of sit-ups and push-ups. At military, uh, we had a coach that had been in the service. But at, at, when, when I got to the point where it didn't hurt anymore, I thought it was easy. You, and maybe easy is not the word, it's hard work, but it becomes automatic to you when it doesn't hurt you anymore. You became comfortable being uncomfortable. And then I'll go get you. I say, let's go down on Saturday. Let's do this. Let's go lift some weights today. And it's our ideal. But coach started it. That's where you want to do it. That's how you change culture. You got to work through the pain because the blessing's on the other side. You won't see the blessing. Buy you got to buy in. Yep. That's good stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Awesome.